Now, you won't shout, will you, Mr. Paynton? Shout, Iris? Why should I shout? It's the old crocodile from Windsor. Yes, what? Its fillings come out. <laughs> so I've got another nightmare journey down a crocodile's throat. Go on, Iris. And the Yorkshire Terrier's in again. What Yorkshire Terrier, Iris? No, you're shouting, Mr. Paynton. Every day I say at least four Yorkshire Terriers. Yorkshire Terriers are my unfavourite thing. If I wasn't a dedicated vet, I'd open a restaurant and serve Yorkshire Terriers on toast. It's, uh, <laughs> it's Mrs. Taylor's. Don't tell me. It's swallowed the rollers again. Afraid so. I looked at the x-ray. What's it like? Vidal Sassoon stock cupboard. <laughs> you see, Iris, I can't even experience the anticipation of surgical discovery. It's just like opening a woman's handbag. Well, what shall I do, Mr. Painton? Look, Iris, I've got a bloke coming around to see the flat. Now, you'll keep your eye on it, and I'll be there as soon as I can. Yes, Mr. Painton. Oh, and Iris. Yes, Mr. Painton. Keep it away from all edible objects, will you? Like swabs, rubber gloves, filing cabinets. <laughs> yes, Mr. Painton. Oh, and Iris. Yes, Mr. Painton. If the crocodile arrives, put them both in the bath. <laughs> I uh, don't want any cushions today, thank you. Oh, I've come about sharing the flat. Oh, yes. I'm just trying my stocks. Will you excuse me while I go and turn the grill down? <laughs> I'm easy to get on with and have a good sense of humour. I will call to see you at 11.30. She's late. It's 11.32. Yours sincerely, Leo Watley. Well, I'm afraid, Miss... Uh, uh, Miss... Uh, Watling. Watling. I'm afraid there's been a mistake. Ah. Uh, I'm a man, you see. Yes. What do you mean, yes? <laughs> I can't stand people who agree with everything I say. Oh, no, then. That's better. Anyway, the fact is, I am a man. Well, I know you advertise for one of your own species, but I don't care anymore. I've seen so many flats and met so many funny people, I'm desperate. I'm very difficult. <laughs> right now, I'd share a fish tank with a shark. <laughs> You're really nice. I can't imagine that. Oh, well, there you are. I see, you've only been here two minutes and you're arguing with me already. Apart from being a man, I'm also a, a very tidy man. Oh, uh, I'm very tidy. I mean, you might even call me fussy. I can't stand things out of place. Oh, I can't either. And women do do irritating things. They leave the top of the toothpaste. They put oil in the bath. Uh, I don't put oil in my bath. You stepped into a bath after a woman. It's like your first time at the ice rink. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and another thing, women cry. They, they always cry. I don't cry. You see, the... Uh, a ma the muscle of a man's eye is connected to his brain, whereas with a woman, it's connected to the nearest water mains, and that means... <laughs> I never cry. So, you see, we are quite incompatible. I mean, you put oil in your bath, you cry. I'm very sorry. Thank you. Thank you very much for the interview. Not at all. It's been my pleasure. I hope you find some suitable accommodation. I expect I'll find a bench somewhere. Yes. Goodbye. Goodbye. And if you were to suddenly change into a man, well, then everything would be fine. I'm very adaptable. <laughs> well, nobody's that adaptable. Where do you keep your milk? It's in the fridge. You see, what I'm trying to say is that, well, a man shares a fat with a man, and a woman shares a fat with a woman. Unless they're married, of course, and well, I've tried that. Didn't it work? Work? Of course it didn't work. It never works. I mean, it starts off with that hilarious word called love, doesn't it? And love is like a bottle of lemonade. Oh, full of fizz. Then what happens? You wake up one morning and... and find that someone's left the top off the bottle. That's right. <laughs> How do you know? Well, I've got through a few gallons of lemonade in my time. <laughs> Don't do too badly with milk, either. Would you, would you just please excuse me? Milk? 
no, thank you. I don't take it. You? No. Only when it's forced on me. <laughs> what um, part of London do you come from? I, I don't come from London. I come from Liverpool. Oh, Scarsland? Yes. So do I. Do you? Yes, Cressington Park. Anfield. Up the reds? Up the blues. Hi, <laughs> girl, what does your dad work at? Oh, he doesn't work. He's a docker. <laughs> round the teeth and round the gums. Look out, Look out stomach. stomach. Here, here it comes. comes. <laughs> Sorry. It's a disgusting place. Full of heathens. Yes. It's a terrible accent. I, I never picked it up myself. A verbal guitar. Yes. Well, I suppose I'd better go then. I went to school in Liverpool. Every Saturday morning, I used to go down to the pier and feed the seagulls. Tatty lot they were, too. Feather dusters on legs. I remember there was one there, and it limped. I suppose that's when I first decided I'd like to be a vet. I had fantasies about inventing artificial limbs for underprivileged seagulls. <laughs> I suppose if it hadn't been for old peg leg, I might have finished up as a bricklayer or a bus driver or a rag and bone man. Hey, just imagine. Any old bones, rags, bones, rags! Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Well, I did mention in my letter about my sense of humour. <laughs> You put the tea cloth in my rabbit jelly. Sorry, I, uh, I would have mentioned that as well. And you, you like to surprise people, don't you? Oh, now I've wet your sink. You live a very messy life, don't you? My life's okay. I just mess other people's up. Well, that uh, was a very eventful cup of coffee. Yes. Pity we didn't get any. Well, it's been very nice meeting you. I have got another address to go to. I'm sorry that you're a man. Yes, well, it uh, does tend to complicate things. I mean, people grow fond of people, and then all that fizzy lemonade starts rearing its ugly head, and I wouldn't want to submit you to all that. You wouldn't? I wouldn't. I don't even fancy you. You don't? No. Your eyes are too close together. <laughs> <laughs> that one should be there, and that one should be there. Don't be ridiculous. I look like a bloody horse. <laughs> anyway, that's, uh, that's fantastic, really, because, well, I don't fancy you either. Don't? Oh, no. You see, I like uh, women with big, you know, big, <laughs> well, that kind of woman. Oh. Well, if you don't fancy me and I don't fancy you, we, we've got something really good going for us, haven't we? Uh, yes, there's just one small problem. Now, you see, I do have a, a private life. I, in fact, I have quite a few, if you know what I mean. Problems? No, private lives. Oh, I wouldn't dream of interfering in your private life. In fact, I was hoping to rustle up a few for myself eventually. You read a lot, don't you? Oh, they're not mine. They belong to the chapel I shared with before. So you haven't got anybody special? Well, I've only just arrived, haven't I? I suppose there must be someone in London who might be stricken with a burning desire for me. What about in, uh, in Liverpool? Oh, there is someone. Threatened to throw himself under a train if I left. He's a bit intense, isn't he? Doesn't that worry you? Not when there's a rail strike on. <laughs> Do you like a drink? Thank you. Cheers. <laughs> Have you ever thought of going in for demolition work? <laughs> More? No, thank you. I don't drink. <laughs> Whenever I don't do a thing, I, I do it quickly. Th then I don't notice I'm doing it. Yes. Well, I suppose there must be a very intelligent message there, somewhere. Uh, now, Laura... Leonora. <coughs> Leonora. We, we could try sharing. It might work. Uh, there is that cushion of yours. I suppose I'd have to learn to live with it. Oh, it, it is very sentimental. I've had all my best moments on that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. It's much better than a chair. Is it? <laughs> Chairs are inhibiting. You can use that anywhere. I've lived a very dull life. I couldn't do it any other way. My poetry. Poetry? Oh, poetry? Yes. Well, when I'm writing, I, I sit on this. 
Oh, green arthritic tree, grasping at the city sky, where is your field of joy? Where is your river by which to sigh? Yes, yes, that's very good, oh, very good indeed. Oh, black roots groping sadly <laughs> neath bricks and mortar in search of sweet translucent water. Uh, if you don't like it here, I do understand you. You're quite at liberty to leave. Oh, wither tree, nature's mongrel pup. Oh, worry tree. Uh, could, we, could we just skip your tree's problems for the moment and <laughs> concentrate on our own, which seem to be multiplying with every verse? Sorry, I nearly got carried away, didn't I? Yes, you did. It was pure restraint on my part. <laughs> I did hear you. I do like it here and I don't want to leave. Oh. Right, well, there are a few things I'd like to explain to you. Now, first of all, are you sure? Yes. Yes, I thought you were. Uh, anyhow, in the hall, I have a clock. Uh, if you'd like to come out there, I'll show it to you. We uh, couldn't put that in the Thames and let it drift gently out to sea, could we? Where it goes, I go. Yes. Uh, now, this, this is a clock. They tell me everything will be different in London. <laughs> it's, it's a very special clock. Don't tell me. It, it doesn't chime. It, it creeps into your room and shouts, Boo! <laughs> uh, the idea is that when I or you have company, you do understand me, don't you, company? Oh, the word does ring a bell, <laughs> yes. Well, when we have company, we turn the clock round like that to face the wall, and then I or you know that I or you have company in there. Oh, I see. It's a kind of warning. Oh, you've got it. It seems silly, really. I, I mean, I'll know if you've got company as soon as I walk into the room, won't I? <laughs> you have got it. That is a bedroom. My bedroom. Oh, I haven't quite got my bearings yet. That's... A... Oh, well, it makes a difference if you've got company in a bedroom, doesn't it? Well, yes, usually, depending on your luck, and... <laughs> Mine seems to be diminishing rapidly. Well, where do I sleep? Oh, yes, of course. Uh, if you'd like to come this way. It, it's, uh, it's a bit small, I'm afraid. Don't worry. I used to be a lift attendant. So long as it doesn't start going up and down. <laughs> I will, of course, respect your privacy, and should the clock be facing the wall, I'll put my earphones on. A and listen to my records, opera. Uh, would you just say, excuse me, it's the telephone. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, can't anybody else do it, Iris? Oh, well, OK, look, I'll be in about 20 minutes. How's the Yorkshire Terrier? Is it? Well, look, you, if you prepare the theatre, I'll do it at the same time. No, Mrs Taylor can't watch. I'm doing an operation, not a cabaret. <laughs> you think we could do a swap and it's giving me an inferiority complex? <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, of course. The, uh... The chap who had the room before said it took his mind off things. It's funny, it seemed to make sense at the time. Look, if you'll excuse me, that was the veterinary clinic. I've got to go and I've got a dog to open up and another to put down. You mean you're going to murder a helpless little dog? But I don't murder things. If an animal is old or in pain, I give it an injection and it slips mercifully out of this troubled world and into its celestial kennel. You don't really believe that animals go to heaven, do you? Well, I hope so. Otherwise, when I get there, I'm going to be out of a job. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I... I would like to uh, put my trousers on. Oh, sorry. Oh, by the way, I hope this doesn't offend you, but I, I always walk about like this. Not at all. If you're going to learn to live with my cushion, then I'll have to learn to live with your legs. <laughs> la, 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 la. That's funny. Where's the bacon gone? <laughs> Oh, there you are. It's no good. She'll have to go. Yes? I'm making you breakfast. That's well, look, there's no need to. In fact, I don't expect you to cook for me. In fact, I don't really like it's women cooking for me. It's nearly ready. So she's going to cook for me. One of these must be mine. <laughs> Miss Waffling! You yelled. Look, what's happened? Suddenly my underpants are made of hardball. <laughs> I was lacquering my hair, I must have missed. 
<laughs> you left the top of the toothpaste. Sorry. I dried the soap after me. Thank you. I've been meaning to ask you. Did you murder that little dog? I terminated a miserable existence, yes. I suppose it offered you its paw? Yes, we shook hands. I asked it if it had a last request, so it gave me a quick bite. <laughs> and from then on, it was either him or me. You don't look like a killer. My instinct as a vet is to cure, not to kill. Excuse me. It's double one six one. Oh, Angela. Hello, love. Tonight. Did I say that, Angela? Well, I'm afraid it's a bit difficult, actually. I've got my mother staying here. <laughs> no, I can't send her out. She's 83. <laughs> Look, Angela, I'll, I'll give you a ring soon. Yes. You are. <laughs> I can't wait. OK, then. Bye. Uh, it's one of my private lives. She wanted to come round tonight. I was nearly in a mess. So was I. I'm not even married yet, and I've got a son older than myself. <laughs> you see, you see, that's what women are like. Two coffees and a kiss, and I'm trapped. It's always the same. It must be very difficult for you being so handsome. Yes, yes, it is, actually. <laughs> I suppose you wake up every morning and think, God, how am I going to live with all this maleness? All this beauty. I do have mornings like that, yeah. I shall never have anything to do with women. Jumping into a woman's arms is like jumping into a liquidizer. <laughs> What's this? It's obvious what it is. It's eggs and bacon. <laughs> so it is. Never had it dipped in concrete before. You don't like my cooking? Like it, I love it. It's a whole new experience. The whole spectrum of life has suddenly opened and I've been catapulted into a world of pure culinary magic. I think I'll pray. What for? My teeth. I was right. You don't like it. That is a perfectly good egg. <laughs> You don't like anything, do you? Yes, I do. I like sunny walks, singing birds, old cars, La Traviata. I used to like eggs. You don't like cushions, you don't like lacquered underpants, you don't like women. And you're not eating my food because I'm a woman and you're trying to upset me. I'm not eating your food because I'm a man and I'm trying to survive. Well, let me tell you, Mr. Derek Payton, I don't much care for you either. In fact, your eyes are even closer together now than what they were before. Where are you going? To find another flat. Now, look, let's be sensible, let's be calm. I am calm. I was beginning to enjoy sharing my flat with you. I think you're a sweet, gentle, feminine person. Would you mind moving out of my way, please, or else I'll punch your face in? Well, you can't always be right. If you hadn't been here last night when Angela phoned, I would have given in and spent the evening with a woman. Instead, I chose to spend it with you. So what am I, a fella? Don't be silly. I think of you as my friend, my, my flatmate. Your flat-chested mate, you mean? I never said anything about you being flat-chested. Oh, yes, you did. You said I, I wasn't that sort of woman, remember? You'd be totally illogical. Don't you call me illogical. You think all women are illogical. Well, we're not. And when I take my bra off, at least it's still there. <laughs> What's still there? My flat chest. <laughs> what are you trying to say? It's obvious what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is I may not have anything, but at least it's all mine. <laughs> If we're going to continue with this ridiculous conversation, may I remind you that you did go on about my eyes getting even closer together, and they are mine. In fact, I quite resign myself to the fact that tomorrow morning I could wake up with just one big one right in the middle. <laughs> then you'll have to get yourself a good vet, won't you? I know it's a hobby of yours, but you're in the way again. There you are, you see. Now, you've got that common sound about you again. Oh. I'm sorry I don't come up to your standards, Mr. X Liverpool Wacker, but I've only just bowled into London. 
and I've still got a wooden spoon in me gob. <laughs> Cushion. And I hope you'll both be very happy. Thank you. I've uh, left you the tube of toothpaste. Thank you. I'm taking the top with me. <laughs> Excuse me, can you tell me where the nearest phone box is, please? Yes, darling. Take four paces backwards, turn right, two paces forwards, and give that to the nearest couple on your left. <laughs> to share yet? You haven't? Oh, good. Well, I'll be round in about half an hour, if that's all right. The tube. Yes. Piccadilly line. Yes. your bed over there. Yes. It's very nice. Very nice indeed. Uh, that's Claire. Oh, how do you do? She's fasting. Is she religious? No, just fat. <laughs> She's got a lot of hang-ups, so we just let her lie there till she runs in a blubber. Oh, and uh, that's Annabelle. Oh, how do you do? She's into serenity. Does yoga all day, plays the guitar all night. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> Are you religious, by the way, love? Uh, no. Only when it's dark or when I'm drowning, things like that. <laughs> Sandy is. You haven't met her yet. She's out protesting. Oh, it's, it's a good, healthy, outdoor life, protesting. Yeah, well, you see, she woke up this morning with this theory that God was a woman and that Christ is short for Christine. So she's gone to Hyde Park Corner to spread the good news. <laughs> she makes fantastic coffee, though. We dyed the curtains in it. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> Don't worry about the dog, love. It's going to the dog's home in the morning. It's not normal. Oh, poor little thing. Oh, little's right. It's too bloody little. Annabelle's a bit absent-minded, you see, and keeps wiping the table down with it. <laughs> I'll look after it. Nah, love, it's got to go. Now, the motto here is do your own thing. The rule's non-existent. You book your bath in advance and we wash up on Sundays. All right? Lovely. So, unpack your gear and relax. Yes, well, I... I feel very relaxed already. Great. <laughs> Shut up! Watch out! <laughs> Sorry. Forget it. I'll go and give it some of Sandy's soup. That should shut him up. Shuts everyone else up. <laughs> He's following me. <laughs> Darling. Mm, Darling. If I took all my clothes off and stood on my head on the table, would you notice me? Well, of course I would. 
to be blocking my view. Isn't there anything about me that might take your mind off the television? You're not afraid of me, are you, darling? Oh, Angela, you like all the rest. You're wearing an easy access dress, perfume laced with ether, and you've taken the phone off the hook. Mm. I mean, a man's got to protect himself. It, mm. it takes courage and, and willpower, but... Say those three... <laughs> say those three little words for Angie. A neurin primidin oxytetracycline. I know. It's I love you in Latin. No, it's three treatments for distemper. <laughs> don't worry, my darling. I don't want to marry you. I'm a fun girl. Really? Really? Oh, well. <laughs> oh hell, who's that? Oh, don't answer. No, I've, I've got to answer. Might be a horse. You say that. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> I brought that your underpants. Shh. What? So you've come back. You are there. Oh, I thought this thing might have come back on its own. It did try to escape, but I was too quick for it. What happened? If you have a dog in tomorrow with a stomach full of stuffing, that's what happened. <laughs> You nearly laughed. Yes, I just managed to catch it in time. Look, I've just got to go somewhere very quickly. Now, don't go away. Take your coat off. Go and have a nice bath. Put some oil in it. Have an oil slick. But don't sing. Please, don't sing. Two minutes. Mm, oh, done. It's, uh, it is a patient. It's uh, the pet mouse. It's very nasty. Somebody ran over it with a tea trolley. <laughs> the owner was very distressed. But shall I go and console him? No, I wouldn't go out there. It's very nice, you know, a lot of blood and things. Oh, dear. Now, don't worry. I'll go out there and put it back all together, and then I'll be with you in two minutes. Oh, all right? Mm. Mm. <laughs> now, are you going to stay? I mean, it's entirely up to you. I I'm not sure. I don't know whether I like it here. I'll have to think about it. It'll take some time. Yes, please. <laughs> no, because I think it could be very nice. I mean, I think it could be fairly nice. There's, uh, something that I've got to tell you, though. Well, that makes two of us. Well, go on, you first. Well, I've, uh, I've got company. Angela. Yes, all of her. Uh, do you mind? Well, not at all. I've got company as well. Well, already. I, I got him for nothing. He was in this flat yes, and he didn't I'm want to. Sure now, out. It's English for go. <laughs> Derek, it, it's only a little... Yes. I know what he is. Now, out. Derek! Listen, Darling. sharing my flat with a woman is a problem. Sharing my flat with a woman and a Yorkshire Terry is just impossible. Now, if you'll excuse me. Mind you, on the other hand, it might be coming useful. Somebody's got to eat your concrete bacon and eggs. 